If you like my videos, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my little channel can grow. Thank you. In the mid-1980s, the Saturday morning ritual at the Patman QC household involved a giant bowl of honeycomb in all of my Saturday morning cartoons. From 7 a.m. to 12 p.m., my butt was firmly planted in front of the TV, watching the latest exploits of the Super Friends, the Smurfs, and Pac-Man. Right about this time, a game came along that melded together everything I loved about cartoons and video games. No, I'm not talking about Caillou party fun and games. I'm talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game. What was the original inspiration behind the creation of this arcade game? Why was the name changed when the game was released in Europe? So grab your weapons and don't forget the pizza because it's pizza time. This is the history of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game. The year is 1988. Konami designer H. Oyama is looking for ideas on his next big arcade game. He wanted something that would appeal to both the Japanese and American markets with very little loss in translation between the two. Mr. Oyama had always been a fan of manga, and there was one comic in particular that came from the West that was very unique. The title of the comic was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it was created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird in 1983. The book follows the exploits of four irradiated turtles who become ninjas underneath the streets of New York City. The original format of the comic book was that it was published in black and white, and it looked like a regular manga book. There was lots of violence in the book, and it wasn't exactly kid-friendly. About this time, he had noticed a cartoon based on the turtles that was doing extremely well both in North America and Japan. This was a light-hearted show and made some significant changes to the turtles. To differentiate themselves, each turtle wore a different colored mask. Also, in the original comic, the turtles enjoyed beer, not pizza. Obviously, they couldn't use that in the cartoon, so beer was out and pizza was in. Mr. Royama felt that the kid-friendly Saturday morning cartoon would be a perfect game for the arcades. Since there were four turtles, he set out to design a four-player co-op beat-em-up game which meant four times the profits. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was released in 1989 by Konami. This was a four-player co-op affair which sees you take control of the turtles as they set out to rescue their friend April O'Neil who was kidnapped by the evil Shredder. Thanks to the innovative hardware designed by Konami, the total atmosphere of the cartoon is captured perfectly. Large, colorful sprites with smooth animation makes this a sight to behold. It feels as if you're actually playing a cartoon. And the sound? Absolutely fantastic. All you had to do was walk into an arcade back in 1989 and you would hear this familiar tune. The game was released in both two-player and four-player cabinets. Each turtle has their own unique attributes. Leonardo is the most balanced. Michelangelo is stronger but has a shorter reach. Donatello is the strongest but is very slow, and Raphael is the fastest but is also the weakest. The controls are pretty straightforward. You have a jump button and an attack button. If you press both buttons together, you perform your special move. You can also use flying jump kicks. Littered along the playfield are various objects you can use to your advantage, such as fire hydrants, parking meters, and traffic cones. Not only do you have to contend with a multitude of foot soldiers, but familiar baddies from the cartoon also make an appearance, including Bebop, Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, General Trag, and of course, the master of ceremonies himself, the ultimate baddie, Shredder. When the cartoon was released in Europe in 1987, there was a problem. The word ninja has, and I quote, excessively violent connotations for a children's program. The only thing to do was change the name 
So the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles became the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. There is also lots of humor throughout the game such as falling into open manholes. There are lots of digitized voices taken straight from the cartoon which really helps immerse the player in the game. Some say the reason the game has been so successful over the last 30 years is because of the pick up and play mechanics. Any person of any age can drop a quarter in and be kicking butt and taking names in no time. Unfortunately, this also makes it a huge quarter muncher. There are five scenes included with multiple levels inside each scene. You'll go from the streets of New York to the sewers and then ultimately to the Technodrome to face Shredder. At various points throughout the game, you'll be greeted with cutscenes in between levels to help further along the story. Come and get him, Del Brain. <laughs> I'll owe you one. To say the coin up was a hit would be an understatement. Back in 1989, no matter which arcade you walked into, chances are you would run across this lovely cabinet. Probe Software were in charge of the ports for all home computer versions while Konami itself did the NES version. The first version we're looking at is the Spectrum version. First off, the bad. This game is devoid of hardly any color. If you like the colors of your game to be of the urine flavor, then you will love this version. The sprites are large and detailed and are decently animated. The backgrounds are nice and detailed and vary quite a bit from stage to stage. The speed of the game is pretty good, even with a lot of enemies on screen. Out of all the 8-bit ports, this version fills up the screen with the most enemies. Aside from a few clicks whenever you make contact with an enemy, this version has absolutely no sound. All of the home computer ports allow use of only one fire button, so sacrifices had to be made. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next, and it's not bad for an 8-bit machine. But rather than try to straight up adapt the sprites from the arcade game, they retooled them for the 64 and they look pretty good. The colors are a bit iffy, especially when compared to the 8-bit Amstrad port. The backgrounds are well drawn with plenty of detail and animation in certain spots. Gameplay is fairly smooth, but unfortunately there's no more than three enemies on screen at once. This takes away the frenetic gameplay and urgency from the arcade version. We get music while we play, which is always a big plus. The Amstrad port is up next, and what a port it is. For an 8-bit machine, this really does a convincing job of replicating the bells and whistles of its arcade big brother. The sprites are large and detailed with a nice lush color palette. Even the scrolling, which is something the Amstrad has trouble with, has been replicated fairly well. There are no more than four enemies on screen at once, so the pace of the game isn't quite as hectic as the arcade original. No music and minimal sound effects. The controls are fairly responsive, and even with only one fire button, it's a good representation of the arcade gameplay. Up next is the most widely seen version, and that would be the NES port. This was done in-house by Konami, and they did a really good job. The sprites are fairly detailed, but they are lacking a bit of color. Also, they should be called Teenage Mutant Anorexic Turtles because all four characters are looking a bit on the thin side. The sound effects and music are excellent and really capture the feel of the arcade game. All of the cutscenes in the introduction were brought over and they look great. The only downside is there are no voice samples in the game. However, you get more Pizza Hut product placement than you can shake a stick at. The gameplay is great and feels like the arcade game. Due to the arcade game being so short, Konami added two extra levels to this release. The first of the 16-bit computer ports is the MS-DOS version. This is a pretty good representation of the arcade game, well, at least graphically it is. Unfortunately, when it starts to move, it all goes downhill. The sprites are missing many frames of animation, so everything comes across as a choppy mess. 
The backgrounds are nice and detailed and the colors are vibrant with large detailed sprites. When you actually play the game though, the hit detection is a bit off, but not as bad as other versions of this game. Minimalistic sound effects, but a nice rendition of the music is playing while you play. Up next is the Amiga version. And while it does look pretty similar to the MS-DOS version, the scrolling and animation is a bit smoother and the gameplay is faster. The thing that lets it down though is the sound. There is absolutely no music and minimal sound effects while you play. There are lots of enemies on screen at once, so at least the frenetic gameplay is still there from the arcade. And finally, we have the Atari ST version. This improves upon the DOS and Amiga versions, whereas the scrolling is not as jittery, but that's about it. The graphics and animation are very similar to the DOS port, except for the music. There are actually three or four tracks that play as opposed to just one. The controls feel a little bit better in this version as opposed to the Amiga. Still though, you only have one fire button, so sacrifices had to be made. In 1991, Konami released the sequel, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. The plot revolves around Shredder stealing the Statue of Liberty, so it's up to the turtles to track him down. <laughs> hey, Krang, bring that statue back, you bloated beanbag! The problem is, once the turtles find him, he opens up a time warp and sends the turtles to various points in the past and the future where they have to fight the foot soldiers to make their way back. The gameplay is very similar with the same two button setup found in the original. You do have a few new attacks such as hitting foot soldiers multiple times, slamming foot soldiers into surrounding enemies, and also throwing them towards the camera effectively taking them out. The graphics are very similar to the original but the animation seems to be even better. There is a nice use of scaling and rotation throughout the game that was not found in the first one. What got a massive upgrade was the sound. Not only is the music well done, but the sound effects and voices are phenomenal. The voices are extremely clear and there is a lot more of them this time around. Some of the places you will visit throughout the game are the prehistoric era. A pirate ship. On a train in the Old West. And a star base in the year 2100. The game was well received, but it didn't sell as many units as the first one. Konami realized they were onto a winning formula when it came to the hardware and the game design. Over the next few years, they would reuse the concept for The Simpsons. Sunset Riders. Bucky O'Hare. and the X-Men, which was actually a six-player co-op game that I will be covering in an upcoming video. Probably the coolest piece of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle merchandise I've ran across would have to be from the company Arcade 1UP. For those of you who don't know, Arcade 1UP are in the business of selling miniaturized arcade cabinets that you can buy at your local Walmart and bring home and assemble yourself. The company started out with the basics, such as Pac-Man and Centipede, but have since moved on to Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, and Star Wars, which actually includes all three arcade games. What nobody ever expected was for them to release a miniaturized cabinet of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, complete with four joysticks for simultaneous four-player action. Not only do you get the original Turtles game, but you also get the sequel, Turtles in Time. The miniature turtle cabinet is a bit on the high side, coming in at just under $400. But considering the original Turtles cabinet cost $4,300 back in 1989, this is a pretty good deal. From what I've seen, the reviews have been mostly positive across the board. This arcade game was a massive success and rightfully so. 
It blended four player action together with TV quality visuals to create the perfect multiplayer package. The game was also released at just the right time, right in the middle of Turtle Mania. If you have three other friends, definitely check this game out because once you get all four turtles on screen together kicking shell, there is no multiplayer game better. If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I just recently learned that the more likes I receive, the more YouTube is likely to recommend my channel to new subscribers, so please give me a thumbs up if you like my content. Thanks for watching.